the associate producer of my favorite Bogart film, In a Lonely Place, and even had one of the film's characters named for him. For this one, Kessler wrote, produced, and directed under his own production banner in collaboration with short-lived Grand Productions. Ruth Roman should have been in more noir films. She had the pedigree. Her parents ran a carnival sideshow, and to put herself through acting schools, she worked as a cigarette girl, hat check girl, and posed for covers of True Detective magazine. Warners signed her to a contract in 1949, but Roman never got a role to lift her into the top tier of stars. Sterling Hayden had much the same story with his career. Although groomed by Paramount to be a matinee idol, the actor's disdain for the business curtailed his career, but not before he left an indelible mark in noir. I've already shown five Hayden films on Noir Alley. The Asphalt Jungle, Suddenly, Crime Wave, Crime of Passion, and The Killing, the movie he made before this one. I like to imagine that Johnny Clay, his character from The Killing, escaped the cops at the end of that film, and we're seeing him on the run under an alias when this one starts. The most inventive bit of direction in Five Steps to Danger comes right at the top, a gag swiped straight from Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole. But at least Henry Kessler had the decency to acknowledge it. Notice the name of the repair shop in the first scene. Also featuring a young and restless Gene Cooper and an unmonocled Colonel Klink, Werner Klemperer in one of his first film roles, here is the inexplicably titled Five Steps to Danger. And there's your happy ending, while the world teeters on the precipice of nuclear Armageddon. Just like the 39 steps, minus Mr. Memory. The premise is almost identical, but instead of all sorts of exciting scenes throughout the Scottish Highlands, we get endless highways and lots of talky interior scenes, featuring the scariest thing of all, boring bureaucrats. Our vacationing hero takes all the craziness so stoically I was waiting for a big reveal, like maybe John Emmett was a commie spy himself. If you're too young to remember the days of the Cold War, all of this must seem like so much malarkey. But if you participated in duck and cover drills as a kid, you know the threat of long-range ICBMs and all-out nuclear war was a part of daily American life, as well as ample fodder for movies and TV. The writer and director of Five Steps to Danger, Henry Kessler, was one of the producers and directors of the popular 50s TV series I Led Three Lives, in which Richard Carlson played a government agent pretending to be a communist spy, pretending to be an ad executive. Sterling Hayden lived several lives himself, only one of them as a movie star, which was the life he cared for the least. Hayden started out as a young mariner, and it was his ocean-going exploits that earned him a Hollywood contract. During World War II, he was an agent for the OSS, operating in the Mediterranean. He resumed his acting career post-war, but hated show business, especially after he maintained employment by naming names to the House Committee on Un-American Activities. In 1959, Hayden kidnapped his own children 
and set sail with them for the South Seas, leaving Hollywood behind. Out of that adventure came his epic memoir, Wanderer, which started him on another career as an author. Stanley Kubrick coaxed him back in front of the cameras as General Jack D. Ripper in Dr. Strangelove, which led Hayden to later appear in some of the most memorable films of the 1970s, The Godfather, The Long Goodbye, and Bernardo Bertolucci's epic 1900. In 1976, he wrote Voyage, a massive seafaring novel that earned him critical comparisons to Herman Melville. Sterling Hayden lived a ramshackle but truly epic life. Ruth Roman's sea adventures were considerably less romantic. The same year she made Five Steps to Danger, Roman traveled with her three-year-old son to Italy. Their return voyage was on the ill-fated SS Andrea Doria, which was rammed by another steamship off the coast of Massachusetts and sank. Roman was separated from her son during the ship's evacuation, leading to a media frenzy when mother and child were eventually reunited. German-born Werner Klemperer is, of course, most known for playing the bumbling Colonel Klink on the TV series Hogan's Heroes. Klemperer, who was Jewish, won two Emmys for his comic portrayal of the clueless Nazi commandant. His father was Otto Klemperer, renowned conductor of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, and his cousin was legendary scholar Victor Klemperer, whose diaries are essential texts on the rise of the Third Reich. Now let's just round up some of the other suspects from today's movie. You may have recognized one of the cops as Ken Curtis, who spent years playing Festus on the TV series Gunsmoke. We couldn't let the CIA cop such a big plum, could we? Another deputy was played by John Mitchum, whose older brother shows up in Noir Alley as often as Sterling Hayden. If the shifty Dr. Brandt looked familiar to you, that's probably because you recognized Richard Gaines as the nitwit head of Pacific All Risk Insurance in Double Indemnity. And fans of daytime TV certainly know Jean Cooper from her long run playing Kay Chancellor on the soap opera The Young and the Restless, for which she earned 10 Daytime Emmy nominations. Winning once, she also received a Lifetime Achievement Award. She is also the mother of actor Corbin Burnson, one of the stars of the popular series L.A. Law. Next week, we're leaving the arid Southwest for the salt air of San Francisco. No ominous guided missiles at the center of the story, just a wayward stash of smuggled heroin and a loose cannon eager to retrieve it. Join me back here for the lineup featuring the other greatest car chase filmed on the streets of San Francisco. See you then.